Remains Crawley now. Crew now. The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix will be here on Five Live from two o'clock. We'll also be breaking into it to bring you team news and so on and so forth. So if you want it in full and uninterrupted, it'll be on the BBC Sport website. And at Max Verstappen is on pole, Jenny Gow. Yes, he is on pole, his eighth consecutive pole, which is actually a record equaling feat. Ben Edwards will be our lead commentator. It's quite poignant, isn't it, here at Imola that he equals that record with obviously the great Ayrton Senna. It is poignant because this was where Senna died um, 30 years ago so yeah it is uh, it is a, an emotional time but fair play to Max Verstappen he did a fantastic job in qualifying because we really thought he was under some serious pressure and he was. McLaren were very very close in terms of lap time to him but Max being typical Max um, he was absolutely on the limit got it right and to be fair the team had done a good job because the car was much better on Saturday than it had been on Friday. Yes, Max Verstappen at the moment sits 33 points clear of his nearest rival, his teammate Sergio Perez. But alongside Verstappen on the grid will be Lando Norris, who won last time out in Miami. Can he do it twice in a row? We'll have to find out. Alice Powell is a W Series race winner and F1 analyst. Um, what do you th- think for Norris? What's his best chance of wrestling this win away from Max Verstappen? I think getting in front of him at the start, because this is one of the tracks where it's so hard hard to to overtake drs is not hugely effective there's only one drs zone and that is down from the start finish line down into the first chicane which is turn two so his only option really is to to try and get in front of verstappen at the start so the drama is going to be uh, maybe short filled but we'll bring it all to you let's hear from lando norris hi lando so you're starting in the first row you've been fast pretty much all weekend. Are we going to see another Miami today? I mean, I'm starting much higher up than I was in Miami, so I'm hoping it's a little bit easier, but uh, we'll see. The car's been great all weekend, like you said. Uh, I've been feeling good, so yeah, I'm excited. It should be a a fun race, maybe not an easy one, but um, I definitely think we have the speed. I think we have the speed to challenge Ferrari and Red Bull, so yeah. So here it's all about start or strategy. What do you think is, I mean, most important for you? Like, what are you rooting for? Where where you want to seize the opportunity? I'm at the start, because if I can get in the start, I can control it well, and I think we have the speed to be in control like we are in, where we are in Miami. If I don't get to the start, then it's just going to be a much more difficult race. So uh, lap one is the main thing. Lando Norris speaking to Vicky Piria and uh, he will obviously start alongside Max Verstappen but only because his teammate Oscar Piastri had a three place penalty for impeding yesterday in qualifying so um, the two Ferraris will start right behind Max Verstappen and Lando Norris so I played it down but actually it should be a great start to the race Chappers. Thank you very much, Jenny. So from two o'clock, we will be with Jenny and the team at Imola. Let's head to Saudi next. Alexander Usyk crowned undisputed two on Sports Extra. If you want the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix from Imola uninterrupted, then that's on the BBC Sport website and app. But we're going to bring it to you here on Five Live, but we'll cut away every now and then uh, to get team news from the Premier League games. Obviously, it's the final day of the Premier League season, and our commentary is from the Etihad Manchester City against West time from four o'clock but for now let's head to Imola and Jenny Gow. Thank you so much yes the race is about to start in Imola it is round seven of the Formula One World Championship and it's the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. I'm Jenny Gow alongside me is Ben Edwards. Ben this is going to be a thrilling start to the race with Max Verstappen on pole and Lando Norris just beside him. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a really exciting start and the run down to the first corner is going to be so important um, because the overtaking here is not easy. I think we're in for a a close battle all the way through from various different parts of the grid, but particularly up front. The fact that Lando Norris won last time out in Miami uh, up against Max Verstappen, who's, of course, four times a winner already this year. Um, It's going to be fascinating to see how that goes. It really will be. Uh, Max Verstappen, his eighth consecutive pole which is pretty impressive at the start of the season his 38th pole position in his career and at the moment he is 33 points clear of Sergio Perez in second place so a lot of people think this is Max's championship to throw away but with Lando Norris winning last time out Ben there is a glimmer a glimmer of hope 
Of course. And I think McLaren, they don't know for sure until it all gets up and running because they saw the Red Bull wasn't particularly quick on Friday. It looked like the car was well updated on Saturday, but we're going to find out if it's good enough on race pace. Alice Powell is alongside me as well, W Series race winner and F1 analyst. Alice, how do you think this is going to go? build up some excitement for us as we watch the cars go round on the formation lap. Well, as you've already touched on, the, that run down into Tamburello, which is effectively turn one, turn two, that's going to be so, so key. Everyone inside the top ten is starting on the medium tyre. You've got Perez that's starting on the high, hard tyre, so that is the hardest compound available, the C3 tyre. Expect him to maybe have a difficult start, and Gasly and uh, Alonso are the only ones that are opting for the soft tyre, Alonso starting from pit lane. Yeah, didn't have the best day yesterday, but he'll try and weave his way through all of that traffic and get somewhere near at the top. Right, the race is about to start. There's smoke going everywhere everywhere for the Ferrari fans who are desperate to see their people win. They start on the second row, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. But as they pull round towards the final corner, I will hand over to our race commentary of Alice Powell and Ben Edwards. So round seven of the 2024 season about to get underway. Max Verstappen on pole position. Lando Norris alongside him on the front row. Then the two Ferraris of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Oscar Piastri getting a penalty yesterday starts fifth, sixth place for George Russell. We're just hearing Fernando Alonso's engine fire up because he's going to be starting from the pit lane. We've got Yuki Tsunoda in an excellent seventh place on the grid. Lewis Hamilton is eighth. Daniel Ricciardo ninth. And then Nico Hülkenberg rounds out the top ten. Sergio Perez starts 11th. And as Alice told us, uh, he's on a different tyre compound to those around him. He's on the hard compound. He's got a lot of work to do to get back up into a decent point scoring system. 12th is uh, Esteban Ocon. We've got Lance Stroll in 13th. Alex Albon down in 14th pace. Then Pierre Gasly, Valtteri Bottas, Zhou Guan Yu, Kevin Magnussen and Logan Sargent with, as I mentioned, Fernando Alonso starting from the pit lane. We're getting set then for the start of this first European Grand Prix of the season at Imola. A fantastic crowd. It's a beautiful day. A very light chance of rain later on in the race, but it's only a 10% chance. It looks like we're on for a dry race. All set to go. Round seven of the FIA Formula One World Championship. Lights out, away we go, and Max Verstappen versus Lando Norris. And it's pretty even off the line, I have to say, as they come down towards the first corner. Lando Norris on the outside, whether he can go around the outside, I don't know. It's going to be a tough one. Max Verstappen has got the lead. And second place for Lando Norris. He's managed to fend off the Ferraris. Charles Leclerc in third place. Then it's Carlos Sainz in fourth position. Oscar Piastri in fifth. George Russell in sixth. Lewis Hamilton in seventh. So Lewis has actually gained a place. Sergio Perez trying to gain some more while starting on those hard tyres. But it's it's a good getaway for Max Verstappen. Perfect getaway. And actually, Lando Norris is under heaps of pressure from Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. And a small bit of contact there. And that looks like Esteban Ocon and Lance Stroll. Looks like they've both escaped as they head up to turn nine. A fast, sweeping left-hander, a Piratella. Everyone, though, is through nice and safely at the moment, Ben. Yeah, so far, so good on this opening lap. And, of course, Fernando Alonso having to start from the back. That's a tough one for him. But Max Verstappen is already pulling away a little bit opening up a slight advantage over Lando Norris in second place. Everyone having to watch the curves and try not to run into the gravel traps. As we know, the gravel traps here are much, much closer to the edge of the track than they have been in the past. It's been one of the main modifications, but I'm amazed, actually. We've got virtually all the way around the first lap and no one's ended up in a gravel trap yet. No, not yet. Everyone's been calm and safe. Uh, no one real making big changes. Actually, Perez has gained on that hard tyre. He's made his way slightly up further up the order past Daniel Ricciardo but all the gaps are fairly similar at the moment as we touched on prior to the start of the race it's so difficult to overtake round here DRS is only worth around about four tenths of a second as we ride on board now with Sergio Perez who's hunting down Yuki Tsunoda who had a very good day yesterday DRS is now enabled but the only DRS zone that we have on the track here this weekend is that run across the start line down into the first section of corner so Verstappen from Norris, Leclerc and Sainz Piastri in fifth and George Russell in sixth. Jenny? Yeah, just looking at the possible race strategies for those that have started on the medium tyres, you're looking at the pit lane opening 
around lap 21 to 27. If you started on a hard tyre, maybe around lap 34 to 40, but there's no real issues with how far you can push this um, hard tyre. Maybe even the medium can go quite a long way. So it is just going to be finding a gap to come back out into. And the pit lane loss is a massive 28 seconds. Um, so they will be compromised if they have to come in and pit and, and getting finding some clear space when they come back out into the race. There's no doubt Max Verstappen's pushing on and he's actually got out, or no, not quite out of DRS zone. So he's right on the limit there. I think he was just out of it when they went over the DRS uh, detector. Uh, so I think, in fact, Lando Norris doesn't get DRS on this lap. He is closing up a little bit as they head back down towards the first corner, the Tamburello chicane, but not close enough to go on the attack. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Sergio Perez, by the way, in 10th position, having started in 11th. Daniel Ricciardo's missed out a little bit. He's dropped down to 11th place, having got into that top 10 in qualifying yesterday. And his teammate, Yuki Tsunoda's lost out a bit. He's down in 9th position, having started in 7th. So a bit of frustration for the RB team that did so well in qualifying yesterday. We're going to have to see if that turns around. The two Mercedes, not absolutely together, but they are 6th and 7th. Russell ahead of Hamilton. Yeah, Nando Norris has clawed his way a little bit back up to the back of Max Verstappen. The DRS detection zone actually is quite early on compared to where we usually see it. So it's at turns, well, just before turns 16, 17 and 18. And, and the main reason for that is, is once you do approach that downhill Rivazza section, you, you end up naturally, if you're following a car close behind you, all, you'll have the dirty air from the car in front over your front wing. You'll lose aerodynamic performance, so you'll lose grip so they opted to stick the DRS detection zone slightly earlier so if you do lose some ground due to following a car close behind you can then gain that back up once you uh, have the ability to have DRS down the front straight Lando Norris has not been able to close enough before that DRS detection zone Ben to Max Verstappen so once again he is without DRS however sneaking on the back of the two Ferraris who did have DRS was the sister McLaren of Oscar Piastri yeah he's definitely got uh, close to the the back of the two red Ferraris and the Ferraris are not really staying with the pace of Lando Norris and Max Verstappen they are easing away slightly and as you say they're definitely not within DRS zone but Oscar Piastri is going well now remember he was second fastest in qualifying yesterday but then got the penalty for holding up Magnussen in qualifying and that's what put him down into fifth place on the grid he looks pretty determined to try and make his way through just having uh, listened to the team radios, Esteban Ocon has been in touch and saying his Alpine had, had contacts on that first lap and uh, he's asking the team to just check it out. He's not lost any places, but he's not gained any either. OK, Kevin Magnussen gained a couple of places on that opening lap. He's up into 16th place, but it is his teammate who he's helped several times this year already, Nico Hülkenberg with the Haas, who is currently in the top 10. Any points for Haas, always very, very valuable. Uh, so they'll be pleased to see Hülkenberg running in eighth ahead of Tsunoda and Sergio Perez. Now, Perez on that hard compound tyre, it may take a little while before he has the sort of grip advantage because he's kind of waiting for everybody else ahead of him on medium tyres to start wearing those tyres out a little bit. That could take some time, as we've said. We're going into the late 20 laps before we expect those on the mediums to come into the pits. We're on lap five out of 63. Early days so far, but it's Max Verstappen who's got that advantage, and we're just going to take another look at the start and see what we can pick up. It was a pretty straightforward start from the front row of the grid. Max Verstappen and Lando Norris, they were quite even, weren't they? Yeah, they were, and I actually thought that uh, Lando might have had the opportunity round uh, the outside, but thought better of it, didn't want to take any risk. Interestingly, though, Ben, uh, the the first Ferrari, the leading Ferrari, which is Charles Leclerc in third place, has actually dropped out of the DRS uh, detection of Lando Norris, but he's got his teammate all over the back of him, and then behind them is Oscar Piastri. So I wonder if uh, Carlos Sainz might be coming on the uh, on the radio to say, hey, look, guys, uh, let me through. We've often hear that tactics for, from the drivers. He'll say, I'm the faster one, and at the moment, it does look like that is the case. But then he has got the toe, so that helps, doesn't it? So uh, we are now, we are just having a check on the uh, start and how it looked once again. So Verstappen and Lando Norris, as you say, Lando Norris had a pretty good getaway. Um, behind them, everybody was trying to jostle around for position. The Ferraris thought they might have a chance to get alongside, Ferrar uh, alongside Norris, but Norris actually just managed to close open the door on Charles Leclerc.
there and he was able to hold on to that second place. And actually Oscar Piastri got a very good launch. I was just looking a little bit further back. He had a little look down the inside of Carlos Sainz. But because it's a fairly narrow circuit here, we're just looking at the onboard from Nico Hülkenberg, who didn't really make any major gains, managed to go around the outside of Yuki Tsunoda. Here we go. Yes. That was good, actually. He got past both of the RBs. He got past Ricardo at the start and then Tsunoda into the first corner. Yeah, and we're going to look at the contact uh, between Lance Stroll, who dives down the inside of Esteban Ocon, gets a little bit of understeer and goes into the side of the Alpine, or, albeit bashing wheels, so they both should escape with that quite, quite OK. Uh, lucky, actually, both of them needed yeah. to receive a, a puncture there. But as I was saying, it's quite narrow, and the two Ferraris almost block uh, Piastri's uh, great start, so he was unable to, to not make any gains. Absolutely right, and actually that contact that you mentioned between uh, Stroll and Ocon there, it, uh, th thankfully it didn't actually come to any problems, even though there was that touch between them. So, that's good news. Verstappen is the race leader from 1.8 seconds from Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc in third, Sainz in that fourth position with Piastri, definitely as you say, closing in and in fact if anything on this lap Sainz dropped back a little bit from Charles Leclerc whereas Piastri is still very much in his DRS zone behind then there's a little bit of a gap to the Mercedes the Mercedes do not have the same pace um, and we're just watching Kevin Magnussen trying to move up through the order as well he's he's behind Pierre Gasly right now uh, but very very close the gap just 0.3 of a second and Again, he's got the DRS. Whether there's going to be an opportunity, that's what's so difficult here, Alice, isn't it? Racing around this uh, Imola circuit, I mean, it's a lovely track to drive from a driver's point of view, but it's not always easy. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Let's uh, listen in on some of the cricket news. Well, England lost a sequence of wickets, three since we last checked in. They're currently 134 for five for the last uh, three wickets to fall. Alice Capsey, uh, uh, Heather Knight and Danny Wyatt, who played a sublime innings on a way to 87 or 48 deliveries. England looking to recover. They could have lost a fourth, act, uh, a sixth wicket there, but it was uh, off a no ball. So they survive England 135 for five with four overs to play. OK, thank you very much for letting us know. And uh, right now... As we're out on track at the moment, it's still Oscar Piastri who is chasing down Carlos Sainz, Charles Leclerc just up ahead of them, and it's Max Verstappen who has control of this race so far. 1.8 seconds is advantage, and we're just having a look at Piastri and looking how close he can get to the back of the Ferrari at the key moment with the DRS, but it didn't quite happen. No, Sainz was just on the radio saying that McLaren is looking very fast, and it is at the moment. Uh, hunting and all over the back of Carlos Sainz, actually faster than Sainz and Leclerc in front of him. So uh, really trying to make his way forward is Oscar. Looked very good yesterday in qualifying. Obviously got that penalty for uh, impeding Kevin Mike Magnussen, and rightly so. Uh, Magnussen, I think that really, I think Magnussen would have got a clean lap and gone through into the next stage of qualifying if it wasn't for Oscar. So a deserved penalty, but he'll of course be looking to clear the Ferraris as quickly as he can. Yes, if he possibly can. Of course, the Ferraris are getting a lot of support here at Imola. They'll be wanted to uh, get a podium out of this, if nothing else. Max Verstappen having that advantage right now and just easing away a little bit more. It does look like it is going to be a yet another Max Verstappen day here. And in fact, he's looking for three wins consecutively at Imola. Uh, of course, we didn't get a race last year, but he won both in 21 and 22. So can he make it three in a row? It's very likely the way things are sitting right now. But who knows? They've got to make it work. They've got to get these tyres to work for a decent length. And there is the possibility when they make their pit stops, because it's not too spread out as a group, you may well end up behind some slower cars and get a bit caught up. So that, that'll be another aspect when we get around to the pit stops. Yeah, we've actually got some drivers coming into the pits already, Ben. Albon is in the pits, Gasly's in the pits, Bottas has, is in the pits as well. So some early stoppers, Jenny, making uh, their stops and changing tyres quite early on. I wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting them to come in on lap nine. It's a 63 lap race, but uh, I'm sure Alice can have a look at it and tell us what she thinks that they are doing. Uh, just on the subject of Max Verstappen, by the way, he, um, he won the virtual Nürburgring 24 hours overnight with his um, virtual team, which is Team Redline. So not only is he completing here one pole position and now looks like he's on, on track to win the race, but uh, 
on his downtime, just competing and winning the Nürburg. <laughs> Great stuff. We've just seen a couple of pit stops already, quite early on, but this is uh, some of those further back down the order, just taking a bit of a risk, but we've got a problem for Alex Albon, who's just been into the pits, uh, had a set of tyres, hard tyres fitted, but he's going very slowly, Alice. Yeah, I wonder if one of those wheels is not attached. I'm just having a little look. The front right, uh, a little bit of a wobble there, so I'm not too sure. The mechanics in the garage with uh, hands on their heads. I've got a problem. My tyre's not on properly. Yeah. It looked like to me it might have been the front right tyre potentially that wasn't on properly. Uh, so the view we can uh, hear now, you can we can see, you can hear, is looking back at Oscar Piastri who's eking ever closer. And actually I was just having a look at the gaps. George Russell did get within two seconds of Piastri and I was thinking here we go, the, the Mercedes are creeping up on the back of this battle but uh, unfortunately for, for George and Mercedes he's now dropped uh, back to uh, 2.3 seconds behind but Piastri Ben certainly on this lap within four tenths of a second of Carlos size is closer than he's ever been so far during this race Let's get some news on the Women's Challenge Cup semi-final with Sharon Shortle. And it's Leeds Rhinos who will be playing St Helens next month in that final after they've beaten Wigan by 34 points to 20. The final word of the game went to the Leeds Rhinos hooker Kira Bennett who scored the final try for stretching out of the tackle. It finished Wigan 20, Leeds Rhinos 34. Back on track here at Emila and uh, Piastri still chasing down Carlos Sainz. Not finding that opportunity to get past just yet but we are watching on board with him right now. And this is the area as they head down towards the uh, Tamburello chicane, the Barriente Tamburello. This is where he gets as close as possible. But then as we get there, it's just not enough to get alongside. And Carlos Sainz is very aware of that. He's controlling it pretty effectively at this stage. So we've had a couple of early pit stops, but we've had that one problem. Alex Albon is definitely uh, in trouble. He's back in the pits now. Whether they can actually sort him and get him back out again, I'm not too sure. Uh, we've seen Pierre Gasly make a pit stop. Valtteri Bottas as well. There we are. We're watching him into the pits now. Jenny. Yeah, poor Alexander Albon. They've brought him back in again. They've put him on a set of mediums. They have to um, secure those tyres. He managed to limp that car around, and I can't quite work out exactly where it went wrong for him. Um, let's have a look at the actual pit stop, Alice. Yeah, so I'm just having a little look. The mechanics have put on a hard tyre. Uh, everyone seems to uh, have given the impression that the tyres and wheels are on properly. We're just getting another view from above Alex's head of the front tyres going on. I think it is that front right tyre. Doesn't look like to me that uh, that was put on properly. So hats off to Alex Albon doing a great job to bringing it back round into the pits. Knight took it nice and slowly as uh, Oscar Piastri there, Ben, has a real wiggle on the exit of turn 18 as he tries to eke his way on the gas but he is getting ever so close to the rear of Carlos Sainz. I think he's going to have a little bit of attack down into turn one. He's having a look at it this time. There's a chance but not quite. Sainz knows he's there. He had to go in a little bit in the middle of the road rather than take full width but actually as they come out of the corner he's still in good position so it is tough to overtake he's now into the second chicane left and right and Piastri working hard to get closer to Sainz so the order we're on lap 12 out of 63 it's Max Verstappen leading from Lando Norris in second place Charles Leclerc we've got more pit stops that's Daniel Ricciardo into the pits Leclerc in third Sainz is fourth Piastri in that close battle in fifth then Russell and Hamilton sixth and seventh Nico Hülkenberg eighth you Yuki Tsunoda in ninth place. Sergio Perez still in tenth. Hasn't really made much ground. Lance Stroll in eleventh place ahead of Esteban Ocon, Kevin Magnussen and Joe Guan Yu. Uh, we've got Logan Sargent in 15th place. Daniel Ricciardo having made that stop, coming out ahead of Gasly, Bottas and Alonso. And Albon now, of course, at the back, having had to make two pit stops. So it's all to watch and there's plenty more to come. Alice Powell, race winner in the W Series and F1 analyst alongside me. And uh, we are looking forward to how this race goes. We're going to be uh, for full coverage on BBC Sports throughout the whole of this race. Radio 5 Live will be giving us some updates on the football. And it's an amazing weekend, of course, for football as well. But uh, if you do want to stick with us then on the BBC Sports uh, online, you can do that throughout the entire Grand Prix. Right, we're seeing a bit more 
action here. Sergio Perez just staying out there, but one of the front runners or relative top tens, Yuki Tsunoda, deciding to come into the pits. Yeah, so that uh, promotes Perez and Stroll now into the top ten. So Yuki Tsunoda is into the pits, Jenny. Yeah, and just looking at him coming into the pits, they raise him up, they put on a new set of hard tyres, and you can hear the squeal as they let him go. It's 2.3 seconds. Total pit stop time will be around the 28 seconds. I'm just waiting for the clock to tick by so we can actually get a true gauge of it. So it's 29.6 seconds to come in, change the tyres and go back out. It's a very long and slow pit lane here, isn't it? It is, but this may trigger off a whole rush of uh, people coming in because sometimes if you, if you get that early stop and it works well, which sometimes it does, we're just having a look at Alonso stop. Oh, that was not good, was it? That was a slow one. Yeah, that was a really long hold there for Alonso and all the mechanics were kind of looking at one another uh, as we're here from Alonso. Copy, Van, copy. Yeah, the front left brake there, Ben, is on fire, so he's got to try and get up to speed as quickly as possible to try and extinguish that fire, and it, it does so. The gap now between Sainz and Piastri has really opened up, and that's the issue with Oscar being tucked under the gearbox of Carlos Sainz. That's really going to harm those at uh, the front medium tyres that he has bolted on to his McLaren. Uh, he'll maybe potentially try and drop back a little bit and close up again just to give those tyres a little bit of fresh air as Nico Hulkenberg now is into the pit. So that, again, wants promotes uh, more drivers further up the field. Esteban Ocon, who is yet to pit, uh, jumps into the top 10 and it's a set of brand new hard tyres on the Haas for Hulkenberg. Yeah, 2.5 seconds. That was a decent stop, but the whole pit lane stop comes to over 29 seconds and that is long and that's interesting he comes right out with Tsunoda and Tsunoda gets in front of him this time so that okay so the undercut the earlier stop definitely helped Yuki Tsunoda he obviously put together a brilliant lap because remember Hulkenberg had passed him at the start Tsunoda's got him back now it's interesting that we've got seven cars who've decided to pit already and they're coming in earlier than we've expected they're all going into the hard tyre I reckon this is their only stop they're planning and they are going to try to get to the end of this race on those hard tyres. They might have to nurse them a little bit to make it, but only losing and what come in for one stop will be crucial to getting track position and keeping it. Yes, indeed. It's a, it is going to be a crucial time. Let's quickly catch up on the England women versus Pakistan women cricket with Atif Nawaz. Yeah, just a few moments ago, England lost their sixth wicket. It was Danny Gibson who middled the ball straight to the short fine leg field. Uh, she was caught by Sadi Iqbal off the bowling of Nidadar. England looking good, though. They're on 160 for six with two overs to go in the innings. Here on the track at Imola, we've got uh, Max Verstappen controlling the race, no doubt about it. 4.8 seconds, his advantage. No stops from the top group so far, but it is the group who are desperate to score points in the top 10 that are beginning to make those crucial pit stops. And Tsunoda having gained a place over Nico Hulkenberg. Let's see whether they are both going to be able to score points by the end of this Grand Prix. All cars are still running, despite the fact there was a problem for Alex Albon earlier on. He is still out there on the media compound tyre a lap down it's been a tough weekend really for Williams in every way but uh, he's still out there uh, his teammate Logan Sargent is a little bit further up the order in 13th place but of course he will be due a pit stop at some point and it's still the, one of the closest battles of this entire group is between Carlos Sainz in fourth place and Oscar Piastri in fifth position again the DRS zone is coming up Again, he's got an opportunity, but I think science is going to be able to fend him off. I think he will. And the next closest battle after that, Ben, is uh, Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. Leclerc now 1.2 seconds behind the McLaren. So uh, a fairly slow start to the race for, for Leclerc. He didn't lose any places, but quite quickly dropped off uh, the pace of the front two runners. Now his previous lap was uh, a couple of tenths faster than Lando Norris. But Lando on this lap has done a personal best in the first sector. So maybe had the team in his ear or he's had a check in his mirrors to see the Ferrari creeping up behind him. Someone that is on the hard tyre in the top 10 and who has yet to pit is uh, Sergio Perez and actually setting pace which is uh, quicker than all of those in front of him. So uh, he's nursing this hard tyre pretty well and uh, we expect these that are sort of in the top seven that are on the, the medium tyre to, to pit anywhere really between lap 21 and 27. But saying that, those further down the order uh, have already pitted who were on the medium tyre. So we'll keep a close eye on those. 
We will, yes. Let's see how it all works out. Um, fastest lap, certainly, for Max Verstappen so far. Not a big difference. He's done a 120.5, Lando Norris a 120.6. But when we were on Friday in the free practice sessions in the race pace they were doing, there was no doubt that McLaren seemed to have the advantage then for the work that Red Bull did on the Friday night. A lot of simulation work back at their factory as well. It definitely has made quite a big difference. And the Verstappen Red Bull car is now working very well in race pace. Carlos Sainz still holding on. Um, unsafe condition Albon incident. That's under investigation by the FIA stewards because, of course, they didn't manage to attach the wheels properly. Yes, you can't leave the pit lane if you haven't attached the wheels properly. You face a fine for most part if you um, manage to or happen to do that. So the fact that he managed to limp round back to the pits is good for the team, but they will probably get some sort of penalty for that. Um, just looking at the radios at the minute and um, hearing from Valtteri Bottas, who's down in 18th place, he has made a pit stop and is following Pierre Gasly. And the team just say, you're faster than him, which basically means overtake him please as soon as you can I think he, he's trying but it's really difficult to uh, overtake out there it's funny isn't it we're not at Monaco uh, Alice we're not at a track where we know overtaking really doesn't tend to happen but it is tough here it's it's such a the layout it's a lovely place to watch a Formula 1 car flying through these fast corners but it's not easy to go past no and the issue is with these uh, medium to high speed chicanes that we have if there was any hard braking zones the hardest braking zone on the circuit is Tosa at turn seven and then I would say the next uh, hard braking zone after that really is the the Branti Alta chicane where they fly over those curves that's turn 14 and 15 just into the final sector Oscar Piastri's creeped back up to the rear of Carlos Sainz once again but not able to get his way past Lance Stroll though he is in with DRS uh, range of Sergio Pérez so uh, he'll be looking forward to trying to put the Red Bull under pressure and we're going to see a little replay from Sergio Perez as he's heading down into turn 17 the first part of Ravazza is a lock up oh. into the gravel oh, I went off said Perez apparently on the radio we didn't actually get to hear that but uh, yes he certainly did and uh, he's gone onto the gravel managed to pull it back off the gravel but this is an really important time in the race when other people around him are making pit stops let's quickly get an update on the cricket the 30 20 atif nawaz yes uh, the seventh wicket's gone down for england now they're 168 for seven it was amy jones who went for 26 looking to up the pace uh, but the catch was taken by wahid akhtar off the bowling of fatima sana still one over to go and a monster total beckons for england although as we speak another wicket's fallen the ball's been pulled up in the air uh, by Charlie Dean out towards deep backward square leg and the catch is taken England have lost an eighth wicket now it's uh, 168 for eight with five balls to go thank you well up front in the battle at Imola Verstappen still with that advantage opening up over Lando Norris but further down the order Piastri has not given up on his chase Russell and Hamilton are sixth and seventh Perez in eighth despite that little off uh, he's still in eighth place Lance Stroll is in ninth top ten completed by Esteban Ocon Jenny yes yeah, so I don't see any of the McLaren um, garage team moving to come uh, to bring their drivers into the pits but looking at Piastri he's on the hunt for Carlos Sainz in that Ferrari and I'm just wondering how damaging is this to both of their um, drives I suppose because having to defend having to attack that can really take it out of your tyres um, I, I think it's quite aggressive at the moment from Piastri in that McLaren yeah, I mean, Science has not had to really make any defensive moves, so he's just driving his normal line, but the dirty air that's being thrown out the back of the Ferrari onto Oscar Piastri's front tyres, that will be damaging. This circuit is not a high degradation circuit, so we don't have that element thrown into it. Of course, there will be degradation, but it's unlike other circuits we go to, Bahrain, for, for example, where degradation is pretty high, but uh, everyone sort of keeping it fairly, fairly clean apart from Perez that did go off uh, down into the first part of Ravazza and that's quite tricky isn't it Ben going down into that section it's downhill braking a lot of load on the front tyre and the uh, nature of that turn 17 Ravazza 1 is understeer and if you just snatch that inside left wheel and you miss that inside curve the track falls away and uh, you sail off into the gravel that Perez uh, has found uh, the gravel already this weekend where he caused the red for second red flag of the session that we had in free practice three where he found the, the gravel and the wall at uh, the Baranti Alta chicane. 
Alice, you've raced plenty of time, sometimes uh, supporting Grand Prix, a, a lot of racing in the UK as well. When you're in a race where you're very close behind another car, but you're in a track like this that, that's really difficult to overtake, how do you how do you kind of put up with it? You know, is it frustrating? Do you just have to keep the focus? It is frustrating. You've got to keep your focus. You almost go lap by lap. The laps tick away fairly quickly in the end because you just try and work out as quick as you can where uh, the driver in front of you is the weakest. And as we've said, DRS is only worth about four tenths of a second here. So there's only real option for, for Piastri to get past is using that DRS unless, of course, signs make a mistake. And he's Oscar's going to be make, making sure he gets that exit out of turn 18. He also gets his exit out of 15 to make sure he is within DRS detection zone uh, going down the hill there so just making sure that he is right up uh, to the back of him there but it can be Ben hugely frustration you, you need to try and keep calm keep cool put the driver in front of you under as much pressure as possible and hope that they end up making a mistake I'm actually interested you say that because we're just watching Yuki Tsunoda at the moment keep calm keep cool and I have to say I think he's doing that a bit more this year and when we hear him on radio he is a bit calmer than he was and uh, I think he's doing a good job right now he's catching up to the back of Logan Sargent um, this is a possibility for him to try and get into a situation where he can overtake because Sargent has yet to make a pit stop whereas Yuki Tsunoda is on much fresher tyres so there could be an opportunity for him coming up uh, meanwhile Max Verstappen reporting his front left tyre is not good we are getting to the sort of area now into the lap 21 we thought it would be late 20s before they had to stop but he's obviously finding it not perfect yet no he's not and I wonder if McLaren will actually try and do something with Piastri and Sainz Leclerc's engineer said uh, we're on plan B but we know how many plans Ferrari have uh, they go all the way down the alphabet I'm sure George Russell though he uh, is the first of the top eight or top ten should I say to to be called into the pits uh, his uh, Mercedes team on the radio telling him to box let's get an update on the league two playoff final with Aaron Paul Crawley 1, crew nil. This game has opened up now with VAR playing a big role. Chris Long in on goal was brought down by Crawley keeper Corey Ade. The referee Ben Toner pointed to the spot with the goalkeeper shown a yellow card immediately. VAR then sent Toner to the monitor. He spotted that Ade had in fact touched the ball and overturned both decisions. Crawley's Ronan Darcy has just curled an effort over the bar and it is Crawley that still lead here at Wembley by a goal to nil. George Russell's made a pit stop, 2.4 seconds, decent, but uh, it will probably get everybody now starting to make pit stops in that lead group, as you mentioned, because he's the first, really, of that top lead group. He was running in uh, sixth place, and uh, now he has come into the pit. So are we going to see Hamilton coming in? Are we going to see Piastri, Sainz, Leclerc? Those are the key ones, really, because we've seen the pace that Oscar Piastri has got, and it's going to come down to how the pit stops go. That could make a huge difference. Meanwhile, you're listening right now to the onboard power of Yuki Tsunoda who's got very very close to the back of Logan Sargent but hasn't found a way past yet yeah pit stops are about to happen just quickly Alexander Albon has given a 10 second stop go penalty for unsafe release conditions when he came in to stop he's actually just asked um, what are we doing with this race he's working around on a medium it's, it's not what he wants to be doing right now and into the pits has come Lando Norris. So, the man who has been chasing after Max Verstappen, but not quite showing the pace we saw in Miami. 2.4 seconds, a good stop. Just confirmation about that Alexander Albon penalty, as you say, plus 10 seconds. Uh, but it doesn't really make much difference, I'm afraid, because he's right down at the back of the field. But Lando Norris, is he going to come out in clear space? I think he is, Alice. Yeah, or just about. Oh. Actually, no, he's going to come out alongside Sergio Perez. It's the drag race down the line. Perez is going to easily win that down into the first section of corners and that's going to be so frustrating for Lando Norris yes Perez is yet to stop but he's already on the hard tyre so he can eke out and go much further uh, than those on the medium tyres and we know we've already said and we, we will say it again it's so hard to overtake ground here and Perez I can guarantee you is not going to make it easy for Lando Norris to, to get the pass but it is a huge set of uh, hard tyres that have gone onto the McLaren but they've, uh, they've not done any laps now George Russell all over the back of Esteban Ocon he's got the aid of DRS and he was so close coming out of the final corner. He breezes past down the main straight. We see an overtake at last here at Imola. That's good news. Um, let's get a quick update on the England innings in the T20 with Atif Nawaz. 
Yes, uh, England have been bowled out for 176 from their 20th over. They were running for extra runs on that last ball, causing a run out. But 176 is a mammoth total on uh, a good wicket here at Headingley. Danny Wyatt, the star of the show, 87 of 48 deliveries for her. Welcome return to form for the England opener. It'll take a record run chase from Pakistan uh, to get a consolation win in a series. Already, uh, England have an unassailable lead of 2-0. Looking good to make it 3 Looking good for Lando Norris as well. He's just managed to get back past Sergio Perez. So Perez was in front of him after he made his pit stop. But what's also interesting now is that his teammate, Piastri, has just been into the pit. So surely we're going to see Carlos Sainz then make a pit stop. This outlap that he is now doing is absolutely crucial to the end result. Yeah, your in-lap and your out-lap is so important. As Oscar knows, he was right up the back behind of Carlos Sainz. So he knows how crucial this will be. But so will Sainz. If Sainz has got anything left in those tyres, anything left in the tank, he needs to use it now. Ferrari have not decided to call their drivers in just yet. Max Verstappen is coming into the pits. Our race leader is now into the pits. But, Ben, I'm just noticing on our timing screen, he is been given a black and white flag for track limits so essentially this is his final warning if he uh, goes over track limits uh, once again that will be a five second time penalty a 2.6 second stop is not the best for red bull they're normally uh, right down at the low two seconds sometimes into the 1.9s but it didn't happen this time not that it should matter because he's had a decent advantage here max verstappen it wasn't a major problem in the pits it just wasn't as rapid as sometimes the whole pit stop has taken 30.4 seconds that shows you how long it can be here at imola but what we want to keep an eye on is Piastri. Now he's got a car to overtake and it is Lance Stroll that he is going past. That brings him back up into seventh place. He's on the fresh tyres. This these couple of laps so important now science is still out there interestingly ferrari are now running one two they have not responded immediately that's very very interesting if science pits now as you can have a look well we're, we're just checking our our figures at the moment it would mean that piastri would be out in front so i wonder if that means ferrari are now going to go a lot deeper yeah i think um, they're looking to go a lot deeper but i just heard the crowd and as soon as the Ferraris came in to first and second position, even though it's Verstappen who's pitted to give that, um, they went wild. It's Ferrari leading in Imola. It's, it's a good thing. Well, they are bringing, oh, they're bringing Leclerc in first, which is understandable because he's the leader of the two. This could hurt Science, there's no doubt, because if Science comes in the next time around, I reckon, Alice, that uh, Piastri will be in front of him, but will he be in front of Leclerc? Yeah, that is the question, Ben. A fairly smooth stop there from the Ferrari pit stop. 2.8, though. I mean, it looked much better for on screen than uh, looking at the stopwatch. Uh, but Lando Norris now has just stolen fastest lap of the race from Max Verstappen with a, a one. 20.4 but that's just been taken by piastri piastri's just taken fastest lap so we really do have a battle between piastri and both ferraris yeah these mclarens really have come alive uh, on the hard tire piastri especially who's gone uh, half a second faster than his teammate charles leclerc is desperately weaving left to right to try and get some uh, heat into his tires he's behind piastri though isn't he so he's come back out behind piastri and uh, that is certainly going to hurt as we, because uh, he's now behind Sergio Perez. And remember, sorry, he's ahead. Yeah, he's ahead of Piastri. He's uh, behind Norris, isn't he? So, yeah. Oh, 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 what's going on here? It's Hamilton. Hamilton. He's been off somewhere. He's had a, you can see there's a lot of gravel on the tyres. I'm wondering if he's gone off where he went off uh, earlier on in the weekend down at uh, Aqua Millerali turn 12 because there was a lot of gravel dust being flicked up and you can tell by looking at the sidewall of the tyres of that Mercedes and we've got a Ferrari right on the back of Sergio Perez and that is Charles Leclerc who's going to be desperately trying to uh, clear the Red Bull in front of him well within DRS detection as he heads down the hill into turn 17. This should be fairly easy for the Ferrari driver. Much better traction out of the final corner on the fresher tyres. Perez, he's going to be a sitting duck down the straight as uh, it's going to be a nice, easy, clean move for Charles Leclerc down into the first chicane. Yeah, absolutely. And Piastri is just in behind, as you say. So with, Piastri hasn't gained on Leclerc, but I still think he's got a real chance of gaining on Carlos Sainz. Sainz as is is our race leader now. Carlos Sainz hasn't made the pit stop yet. Is he going to go for a rather different strategy? We know he does that sometimes, Carlos Sainz. Sometimes it's his decision. 
I tell you what, I mean, whatever Oscar Piastri's been having for breakfast over the course of this weekend, it's really working well because he is looking very good for potentially getting that final spot on the podium. Carlos Sainz is now being called into box. I know we're only on lap 27, so I might be getting a bit too carried away, but the pace of him in that McLaren is so good. He is now 1.2 seconds behind Charles Leclerc, but the mannerisms of the McLaren look, look much better than those of the Ferrari. Is into the pits, Ben, is Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz in, so um, and also Hamilton being told to come in. Let's go to Andrew Benson, our BBC F1 expert journalist. Uh, what do you think, Andrew, in terms of what's going on with Ferrari? Well, what happened with Piastri and Sainz was that as soon as McLaren got Piastri in before Sainz, I think Ferrari have seen that they can't they can't defend that position as soon as, because the undercut's so strong. So they had to try and run longer with Sainz, which is what they've done. They pushed him as far as they can out to lap 27. He's going to come out quite a long way behind Piastri, around about five or six seconds by my sort of quick mental calculations. But the question is, why didn't they bring science in before Piastri and then try and protect tra track position? Yeah, it's a good question. We oft, I feel like we often question many things that Ferrari do, and I thought actually they seem to have sorted it pretty well, especially since Fred's been been around certainly this first half of this year. But uh, certainly. Uh, I agree with Andrew. I'm not sure why they didn't call them in uh, much earlier and Sainz is, is dropped way down. We're going to see what happened to Lewis Hamilton. He heads down into Aquamina Raleigh. He just has a front right lockup and yeah, through the gravel there, emerges out the top of the hill. Uh, so similar, well, the exact same place that he went off uh, earlier on in the weekend and actually the same as when Max Verstappen went off as well. Yeah, unusual mistake to see there. Yuki Tsunoda, meanwhile, has been battling with Logan Sargent for lap after lap, went round the outside going into Tamburello and managed to pull off the uh, move. Great stuff from him. Nico Hulkenberg, in the meantime, has also been making some progress as well on the attack as well of Logan Sargent and done a similar thing, hasn't he? Yeah, nice move there from... Hulkenberg round the outside of Logan Sargent, who's just starting now to fall down further down the pack. He's going to be well, he is in the clutches of Daniel Ricciardo as we speak as they go down into the real tricky uh, Marante Alta chicane, turn 14 and 15, where you do have to hit those huge curbs on the inside, Ben. And Perez gave us a good demonstration of how not to do uh, that corner earlier on in the weekend where he just got out of shape over one of the curves and that fired him off to the right-hand side into the gravel, into the tyre barrier. As, Carl, as uh, Daniel Ricciardo now is going to be all over the back down the main straight of Logan Sargent who looks left and looks right in the mirror. Yeah, I think this is going to be an opportunity for Daniel to have a little opportunity to get past. We shall see. It's not actually there, so whether he can do it next time, I think he's not quite close enough just yet. Let's get an update on the League Two playoff final with Aaron Paul. Crawley 1, Crew nil. The boys from Sussex hunting a second goal. And they've gone close. Liam Kelly drilling a shot in towards the top corner from the right-hand side. Max Striek with a flying save. Crawley eight minutes plus stoppages away from League One. They lead Crew by a goal to nil. Carlos Sainz chasing down Sergio Perez. Remember, Perez has not yet made a pit stop. He started this race on hard compound tyres. He's still in fifth place, but he will have to make a pit stop at some stage. We are not quite half distance at the Grand Prix at Imola, and right now, Perez obviously trying to gain as much opportunity, having started down in 11th place. Just looking at the lap times here, Charles Leclerc's previous lap, 120.5, Oscar Piastri, 120.3, as Carlos Sainz should breeze past the Red Bull down the main straight, which he does, but the Ferrari of, of Charles Leclerc is under huge pressure from Oscar Piastri, who's only half a second behind now. Meanwhile, it's not all going perfectly for Mercedes either, is it? No, we saw Hamilton coming off for the track. He managed to get it back on, but they did a pit stop and it was quite long, an extra, I think, about four seconds than everyone else. They didn't actually put the pit stop time up there, unhelpfully. But, um, yeah, he's currently sitting in ninth position and Stroll is actually ahead of him now, whereas it was um, Russell and Hamilton running together before. Thank you. Jenny Gow, Alice Powell with me as we look at the half distance coming up here let's just quickly run you through the order it is Verstappen who has been leading from the start Lando Norris who's been chasing him but hasn't quite got the same pace as he had in Miami Charles Leclerc is back into third place Oscar Piastri has gained a place over Carlos Sainz courtesy of an earlier pit stop so as long as his tyres make the full distance he's in good shape for fourth fifth place for Carlos Sainz sixth is Sergio Perez but he is due a stop at some point George Russell currently seventh head of Lance Stroll and Lewis Hamilton 
Oscar Degg on all cars looks higher than expected, but we think this is plan B, not plan C. Now that's interesting that McLaren reporting to Piastri the degradation on the tyres may be higher than expected. So those that have made quite early stops, particularly Piastri, for example. Meanwhile, George Russell, George Russell getting past Perez. Yeah, that was uh, quite a close little battle between them. George Russell has gained sixth, Perez down to seventh, Stroll in eighth, Hamilton ninth and Magnussen ten. Perez uh, really struggling now on that hard tyre. Quite aggressive defending there uh, against George Russell. But uh, interestingly, that uh, Charles Leclerc has got some traffic, some lap traffic in front of him, which might help him if he can get DRS from those lapped cars in front of him. That just might eke him away ever so slightly from Oscar Piastri. And at the moment, Charles is getting a very good exit out of that middle chicane, which is just before the DRS detection. So Oscar's almost following him around the circuit, around about eight tenths of a second behind until that chicane where clearly uh, Charles knows I need to get a good exit out of here to make sure I break over a second as we're just seeing a replay of uh, Sergio Perez almost jinking in the braking zone and uh, George Russell having to take avoiding action so I wonder if George will be on the radio but now we have Oscar Piastri coming across the line behind and he does have DRS this time yes this is interesting that Piastri is closing on Leclerc let's get a quick uh Update on the League 2 playoff final to Aaron. Crawley 2, Crunel Crawley are heading to League 1 and it's Liam Kelly sent forward with a defence splitting long ball. He tried to square for Danila Orsi in space. The initial effort blocked by a defender, but Kelly got a second bite and was able to tap the ball into the net. Crawley 2, Crunel 5 to go. Here at Imola, we've got uh, Verstappen leading from Norris in second place, then Charles Leclerc, but under some pressure from Oscar Piastri. So the early part of the race, it was Oscar Piastri chasing Carlos Sainz, and now he's got to do it all over again with the other Ferrari driver. He has that McLaren looking so, so strong at the moment, certainly with Oscar Piastri behind the wheel, who still holds the fastest lap, though he just nibbled a bit too much curb there down at Aqua Millerali, so his exit up to the chicane is not going to be great. He's really on the cusp of whether he'll get DRS on the next lap. But Charles Leclerc has a bit of a squirm of the rear end on the exit of the chicane as we wait for the figures to pop up on our screen. And they're heading down the hill now to where Sergio Perez visited the gravel a few laps ago. Now exiting the final corner, heading on to the 33rd lap. We've got a few people in the top ten that still haven't made a pit stop. So Perez in seventh place, Lance Stroll in ninth, Magnussen in tenth. They're unlikely to obviously finish in those positions because they've still got to make their pit stops. Perez will be interesting to see if he still can get some points. I don't think uh, Magnussen and Stroll, it's going to be much harder for them to finish up in the points. What it would do is bring some of the others further up the order. Over to Jenny. Yes, just looking at Alexander Albon and the Williams. He's having a dog of a day, I have to admit. Um, he's come in now to the pits four times. He's been put on another set of medium tyres. Um, he's been on the radio saying, what is actually the plan for this race? I mean, he's just trundling around. I thought it, when they pitted him last time, they were going to make him stop. But he's gone back out there. A few other drivers having to do a second pit stop. So um, the dog is obviously higher than expected. And, and that is showing with the pit stops from the rest of the field at the well it's towards the end end of this field that is interesting and we may see that uh, extra pit stop sometimes also Alice what we do sometimes see particularly if we get extra pit stops late in the race and the heat in the wheels and in the whole car that much higher you do sometimes get sl slightly slower pit stops too yes you do and now we're catching a replay of Lewis Hamilton riding on board already visited the gravel once he takes a big dive down the inside of uh, Lance Stroll who appeared to me to break extremely early into that chicane so uh, whether there's an issue there on his Aston Martin now we've got Nico Hulkenberg chasing Joe Guan Yu down into the middle chicane the very tight chicane where gravel traps being added compared to when we last raced here I think the thing got to bear in mind is that Joe Guan Yu, like one or two others, has not made a pit stop yet. So clearly those tyres are well past their best at this stage. So we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. I'm fascinated by this, though. There are some really good battles and a, and a track that we didn't think they'd be overtaking. And actually, up and down the field, we've seen people overtaking. We've seen some really tight fights. And Piastri has just set the, set the pace for everyone, really, even though he's not leading this race. He's, He's leading it in, in some ways, isn't he, with just what he can do on track. 
It is good stuff from Piastri so far. Joe Guan Yu's just come back into the pits, or I should say go, gone into the pits for the first time because he hadn't made a pit stop. So that has obviously allowed Hulkenberg through. He's currently in 12. We are made so much slower than the guys behind. And they're using their tyres a lot more than we are. <laughs> yeah, but I have no pace. I was just looking, that's Lando Norris on the radio there. I was just looking, two laps ago, the gap between Leclerc and Norris was at 3.5 seconds. It's now 2.7, so Lando not feeling confident with the car beneath him, but his crew on the pit wall clearly saying to him, well, they're using their tyres a lot more than you are. Oscar Piastri now has dropped 1.4 seconds behind Charles Leclerc. Again, I wonder if he's decided to drop out of that dirty air a little bit just to give a bit more life to his hard tyre. Those that are on the hard tyre, Ben, uh, we're into that pit window. Those that started on the hard tyre, lap 35 now, and it's the range really from Pirelli was anything between lap 34, lap 40 if you started on the hard tyre. Now this could be fun. Lewis Hamilton is closing in on Sergio Perez. Uh, the gap just four tenths of a second and an opportunity perhaps for Lewis who had that little off into the gravel but managed to get back up and uh, didn't lose too much time. Uh, getting past Perez would be important and uh, it does look to me as you say uh, those tyres for Perez are definitely past their best now and he is struggling a little bit more with grip through the corners. Yeah. He is, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see Sergio Perez take to pit lane very soon and change on to what I expect will be a medium set of tyres as they go through the chicane. Lewis Hamilton is going to be right under the gearbox of Sergio Perez as they come into the final sector now down the hill, easily within DRS detection, only six tenths of a second behind the Red Bull, Jenny. Yeah, just looking at Perez and uh, the gap that he will fall into if he does pit, it looks a bit messy. There's Dan Ricciardo, Valtteri Bottas. They're all in that sort of timeline. So I think they're trying to get Perez to just get further up so that he has some clear air. But now he's in this battle with Lewis Hamilton. I mean, that's preoccupied him a little bit. And it's, it's great to watch. Perez putting a car right in the middle of the road, frustrating Lewis a little bit there because he tried to go one way, had to skip to the other side of the track, and Perez has maintained control. But I cannot see this lasting much longer, but Perez is always a hard fighter. He's not going to make it happen easily for Lewis Hamilton. Lewis is going to have to find the path that does work to get alongside. Ben, we've seen this so many times before, haven't we, with Perez leading, Hamilton trying to make a way through, and timeless, timeless counts that we've seen this battle it's great to see it again it is great to see it and Sergio Perez has had uh, a better year this year generally uh, he's uh, finished second uh, best finish he's had four podiums he's had points in all of the races this weekend actually is the first time that he hadn't made Q3 when qualifying didn't quite go to plan and this being a more difficult track it is harder for him to jump up the order which we've seen many times Alice when he's not qualified too well he often jumps right up the order I think it's much tougher here oh it's hugely it's, it's one of the hardest tracks to overtake on the calendar for, for those reasons that we, we mentioned earlier on in the race however Lewis Hamilton is uh, very close behind the Red Bull now dives and keeps himself in the toe but the power of that Red Bull might be too good for Lewis Hamilton. He opts for the outside. Latest on the brakes is Lewis Hamilton. The crowd cheer and Lewis Hamilton moves up into seventh place. They'll be cheering even louder next year when he's driving for Ferrari, won't they? Uh, it's a massive, they certainly will. It's a massive Ferrari uh, crowd here of fans. The Tifosi who love everything that Ferrari do. A local company, of course, Ferrari, not far away from Imola. And uh, this track, of course, named after Enzo Ferrari and his son Dino. So there's a massive passion for Ferrari drivers, and that's what Lewis will be doing next year. We're just taking a look on board at a replay of him passing, and actually it was, as you mentioned, pretty straightforward in the end because he managed to get alongside and could break much later on fresher tyres. And it's just obvious now that Sergio on those more worn tyres is having to hit the brake pedal much, much sooner. Jenny. Ben, I just wanted to ask your opinion. How, how much did it shock you that Hamilton was moving to Ferrari at the timing of it? And how big is it for the sport, for Italy, for Ferrari? 
I was just intrigued. No, it is intriguing, absolutely. And it was a surprise to, to hear because it sounded like he was going to be Mercedes for a long time. And he, of course, he's had Mercedes support since he was a carter, pretty much. So uh, not anymore. He will be going to Ferrari, a very different team. We're just watching Sergio Perez come into the pits, by the way. Uh, so he has been called in for his what should be a single stop. Let's see which tyres he's going on to. He's going on to the mediums. Yeah, I thought so. You wouldn't want the soft tyres because they only last about 15 laps maximum. And we've still got a little bit further than that to go. Lap 38 out of 63. The stop itself was pretty good. Uh, they've fitted the fresh tyres. And let's just see where he's going to be coming back out on the order, dropping down as several cars going past him as he comes out of the pits, out uh, behind Hulkenberg and uh, behind Ricardo. So he's actually come back out in 11th place. So you've got to say there's a good opportunity for him to make up some ground. Kevin Magnussen, a bit of a slow stop, 3.4 seconds. But yeah, just coming back to the, that Ferrari thing that you were talking about, Jenny, I, I do think it's fascinating. I think, interesting talking to Emanuele Piero the other day, he was saying that actually in Italy, it's not been totally approved by all the fans. Interesting, I was surprised to hear that, but uh, he said usually when you get big star drivers going to Ferrari, the, fa the fans all go mad, but apparently it's a bit of a mixed feeling when they heard it. That's interesting. Emmanuel Pilero is such a, a great figure. He's one of the FAA driver stewards as well sometimes. Why is, was it a mixed reception? I think, I think some of them feel, um, you know, Lewis Hamilton has had his ca fantastic career um, and Ferrari, maybe they want to sort of move forward and uh, in a different way. I think that's that's what, it, what he meant to me, I think. Well, Emmanuel, he, Emmanuel doesn't agree, funnily enough. Uh, Five-time Le Mans winner and, as you say, involved in all forms of motorsport. He was working for McLaren with young drivers until recently um, and, but he actually thinks it's a good thing for Ferrari. He thinks that Lewis will bring immense knowledge, immense experience and he thinks it will help the team. I mean, Brand Hamilton is massive, isn't it? If you think of F1, you automatically think of Lewis Hamilton and, and Ferrari. So I, to me, it's a match that, yes, it was a surprise at the time that it actually came out so early and that they've got a whole year with Mercedes to, to tackle, but I think it's huge for the sport. I'm absolutely massive. Well, out in the race at the moment, Esteban Ocon just gaining a position, but uh, it's going to be tough, I think, for Alpine to score any points here today. There's no doubt about it. And it's a tough day for Aston Martin as well, Alice, isn't it? Because Aston Martin was such a strong team last year. But Aston, particularly this weekend, are, are struggling. We know Alonso started from the back. He's had a pretty tough time. And Stroll now down in 13th place. Yeah, your, your race is really hampered if you qualify totally out of position like Alonso did. He wouldn't have, have qualified down there, of course, if uh, he, he didn't damage the car. Interestingly, though, Ben, I'm just continuing to look at these gaps. Leclerc is going to quite quickly be within uh, two seconds of Lando Norris at the moment. So he's edging, edging closer. Piastri now has dropped way off the back of Charles Leclerc. 2.6 seconds now. Sergio Perez is already starting to make moves up into the top 10. He's already nicked a place off Daniel Ricciardo. He's now all over the back of Nico Hulkenberg. Three tenths is the gap as they go across the line. DRS will be well wide open and this should be a slam dunk move by Sergio Perez. Perez has moved past Hulkenberg and he is into ninth position. The next one he'll be chasing is Yuki Tsunoda and he's not far away, he's only a couple of seconds away, so that's a good chance. It'll then be a much bigger gap. It's gonna be much harder to get higher than eighth because the gap from Lewis Hamilton in seventh to Tsunoda at the moment is some 27, well, in fact, no, it's about 19 seconds. So, so it's a big, big gap and that's gonna make uh, everything pretty tricky, but we shall see how it goes. No, it's, it's 26 seconds, so it's a big gap. We shall see how that goes in the latter part of the race, but at least Perez should score some points. Meanwhile, Kevin Magnussen's making a move as well, or trying to. Yeah, he's trying to go around the outside of uh, Joe Guan Yu, not able to do it, but just looking at the driver tracker, uh, this battle between Norris Leclerc, we can truck Oscar Piastri in there as well. They have got so much traffic in front of them that they've got to try and clear. Well, we shall see. Hamilton, the gap to Perez, yes, 29 seconds. So whether Hamilton can hold on to that, we shall see. Um, lap 41 out of 63. Lando Norris, some seven seconds behind Max Verstappen. We're not seeing much of Max Verstappen at all. He's in total control of this race. Last couple of laps, Leclerc tried to push on a bit. Speak up. Leclerc tried to speed up a bit. The lap before, he did a 21. Last lap, 20.5. So he's trying. Yep, me too, I'm trying, and he's a lot quicker. 
Interesting, isn't it? How the uh, drivers find the tyres sometimes last better on one kind of car than another. That is all part and parcel of Formula One. You've got to get the best out of the tyre but make it last a decent distance. And if you push too hard too soon, you could lose tyre performance. I'm, actually, I'm just wondering, as we see in the pits, Fernando Alonso. Oscar Piastri was very quick when he first came out, needed to be, on then fresh tyres, but he came in quite early, and as you mentioned, he's now dropping back a little bit, so do you yeah. think he's overworked the tyres almost? Yeah, potentially could have overworked the tyres. Leclerc has just benefited from DRS from Pierre Gasly. Norris was already clear of him, so that has really drawn Leclerc onto the back of Lando Norris. Well, we are on lap 42 or 63 of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix here on Radio 5 Live. It is time for an update on all of the news on the Premier League before returning to our coverage of this tightly contested race. If you want to stay with every lap, you can listen via the BBC Sports website online. But uh, here on 5 Live, it's time to hand over to Mark Chapman, a summary on the latest football news. Right now, we've got uh, some other Perez movements going on here. Perez goes around the outside of Yuki Tsunoda, so he has gained that eighth place, Alice, as we kind of expected him to do. But the next step is going to be much, much harder, unless people ahead have to make an extra pit stop. Well, exactly. I mean, I'm just looking at the lap times. They're all in the 120s. Actually, the, the slowest driver at the moment in the top uh, seven is Lando Norris. They're saying that he's just gone a little bit faster, but Charles Leclerc now has the benefit of DRS, and in front of Norris is a battle. Uh, I'm just trying to see who that is between between Magnussen and Joe. So that battle that is still ranging on and is super close, nose to tail is Joe and Magnussen. If this is going to affect it, they will have blue flags, but uh, so they will have to move out the way and respect the flags, but when you're a driver in that position, you, you know that it, you want to try and continue this battle and get past the driver in front but of course they do have to respect those blue flags absolutely but uh, this could affect the gap and the battle between norris and leclerc oh no in fact magnuson getting right out of the way he clearly doesn't want any more penalty points does he <laughs> no he is treading a fine line there with the penalty points that is for sure so he's got out of the way nice and easily and i tell you what norris might have a bit of a saving grace here he might benefit of the drs from uh, joe in front which i think he will he is tucked up behind of the Sauber heading down the hill and of course Joe will have to let him through down the main straight. Leclerc radio. You are the fastest car on track. I mean that's always a good thing you'd like to hear as a driver. Music to a driver's ear saying that you are the fastest car on track and yes I think Lando Norris, no he doesn't. Lando Norris didn't have the DRS detection from Joe in front who is getting the the blue flags flashed at him from the uh, the light boards, the LED boards on each side of the track, and he's still tucked under Ben. Uh, and I'm sure it's around about, I might get this wrong, Andrew Benson might be able to correct me if I do. I'm sure it's around about five blue lights, blue flags that you're allowed to, to pass before you, you need to let the car behind through. It might even be three, Alice. They've reduced he has, it. Yeah. He has let him through now, so yeah, so so that has happened. But uh, that was getting very, very close. There's no doubt about it. Um, and we are seeing how these all work out. Interesting, Alonso has just set fastest lap on a new set of tyres. Yes, uh, it was pretty impressive, actually, and he's stolen that away from Piastri, but it's not inside the top 10, and to get that fastest lap point, you have to be within the top 10. Um, just on the tyres, it's worth noting, Perez, I know he's got a lot to do to close on, on um, the two Mercedes in sixth and seventh, but he's on five lap old medium tyres. George Russell is on 21 lap old hard tyres, Lewis Hamilton on 15 lap hard tyres, and there's, what, 18, 19 laps still to go? So, um, yeah, it's, it, they, may, they may well be pushing it by the end of this to hold on, and Perez is on those um, very nice medium tyres. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, whether he is going to be able to make it work, it's going to be fascinating to see. Uh, we've often seen him leap up towards the end of a, a Grand Prix. It may well come this time, but we're still fascinated to see whether Charles Leclerc can get a little bit closer to Lando Norris. It was fun hearing that, uh, that phrase from his race engineer. And in fact, this is the first time he's worked with his new race engineer, uh, Brian Bozzi, who's uh, the first time that they had worked together as race engineer. They worked together with him as a performance engineer, so they know each other well. But uh, first time he's been able to say that on radio as his race engineer. 
Yeah, usually we hear from uh, Leclerc's radio. We are checking. That's uh, I think Max Verstappen was uh, joking about on a, on a Red Bull video recently, uh, taking the mic basically out of Charles Leclerc's old race engineer. Now Leclerc is getting ever closer to the back of Lando Norris, but of course, as you know, catching is one thing, overtaking is another and this track is not the easiest to overtake but he's closer than he has been uh, the previous several laps within seven tenths of a second that's going to make it slightly easier for him to attempt an overtake as he gets the benefit of DRS down the main straight and now Stroll is all over the back of Nico Hulkenberg for the final points paying position. Yeah and that is crucial a final point as you say for the teams Haas and Aston Martin and Aston Martin having a, a very tough weekend here as we've mentioned already but Haas and Nico Hülkenberg has done well this season but you've got to see that Lance Stroll has definitely got more pace here there's every opportunity he's only two tenths of a second behind so whether he's going to be able to find a way past we shall see this section of the track they're on right now the dip and climb through Aqua Minerali not a place that you can usually get alongside another car up towards the chicane up at the top Variante Alta and that again is not one where you can get through, but you need to be close because you're now getting to the DRS detection zone and he's definitely very much close enough to pick up the DRS when they come down the start finish straight. Yeah, Stroll on much fresher tyres will have the much better traction coming out of the final corner and he is super close to the rear end now of Holkenberg four tenths of a second to be precise as the gap across the line and he has DRS wide open forces Hulkenberg to defend the inside he's going to have to brave it around the outside and it's pretty easy he's able to tuck back in and make the apex there now Norris has stretched his legs a little bit previous lap was his personal best of the race so far so he's opened up a gap now of 1.2 seconds to Charles Leclerc so maybe he was uh, saving something in his tyres uh, as he's still able to uh, set personal best during this race so far. So we shall see how that all works out because uh, for Hülkenberg that's dropped him out of the points right now and with Perez having moved up the order from where he qualified it does make it that much harder to end up inside the top 10. If the points continue as they are right now with Leclerc currently in third place he would move up into second place in the drivers championship because Perez down in eighth place is not likely to score as many points as he needs to hold on to that second place in the championship battle. We are just going into the second quarter of this F1 season now so round seven uh, but out of 24 races throughout the year so we've had one quarter and uh, we're into the second quarter there's been plenty of time for modifications. All oh, off again. Yeah, Charles Leclerc just had a wobble going through the Varante Alta chicane, uh, went across the grass. So uh, we already saw his teammate do something similar in free practice on Friday. He really is wringing the neck of that Ferrari. We're going to check out a replay now riding on board with him. Just asks the car to turn in and he snatches that front right tyre as he goes to turn into the corner. Uh, thinks better of it and skates across the grass just avoiding the gravel trap there at turn 15 so Lando Norris will take a little look in his mirrors and I'm sure he'll have a big smile in, on his face of the Ferrari skating across the grass it's quite funny that's the same corner where he went off uh, in 2022 when he was running in third place chasing down Perez for second place so this time he's in third place chasing down Norris for second place thankfully he didn't spin and go into the side the barrier this time as you said he just straight lined it he knew he was slightly off so instead of trying to take the chicane he just straight lined it and he has uh, he's got away with that and but he is that little bit further behind Norris he's just over two seconds behind you're listening to the power unit of the house of Kevin Magnussen at the moment he's chasing after Joe Guan Yu they're well outside the points these two they're down in 15th and 16th places Jenny yeah, just looking at Hamilton and listening to his radio, he's saying he's starting to lose the rears on those tyres, so it's going to be hard push to go to the end of this race, isn't he? It's a very interesting point, because if they do have to, to come in, and, and really the teams won't want them to, there are 15 laps to go, I, unless there's a major problem, they will try and get them to just look after the tyres now, because otherwise Perez is in the perfect place to gain all these spots. Yeah, Perez is 28.4 seconds behind, so if Hamilton uh, needed to box now, uh, he needs to do it now, or a lap, at least a lap ago as Magnussen tries to go round the outside of Joe and move complete. 
So he moves up a spot, albeit only into 15th place. But I think, Jenny, Hamilton will have to stick it out there now for, for now. We do have 15 laps left to go. Esteban Ocon is a sound you can hear right now. He is all over the back of the next Salva in front of him, which is Valtteri Bottas. And uh, they have got a little bit of traffic potentially behind them as well. So they're having to keep an eye on the mirrors as he feeds it through down the hill into the real tricky braking zone of Aqua Mineral. You can hear the bumps as well as the, they stamp onto the brakes and the car compresses as they go back up the hill and into the Vranti Alta chicane. And that's where Charles Leclerc made that mistake a few laps ago. And on that note, Charles Leclerc, he is now 2.5 seconds behind Lando Norris. Yeah, we've still got all 20 cars running in this race at the moment, so nobody has actually come out of it. All of them are running, but down at the bottom end of the field, you've got uh, someone a bit unusual in Fernando Alonso. We're on lap 50 out of 63, and uh, it's certainly looking good for Max Verstappen. He's still got an advantage over Lando Norris. The gap some 5.7 seconds. Norris has done well holding off Charles Leclerc in their battle for second. McLaren versus Ferrari, and then behind him, fourth place, you've got the other McLaren of Oscar Piastri ahead of Carlos Sainz. So you've got a sort of double battle between McLaren and Ferrari, but no major change. George Russell is currently in sixth place. Lewis Hamilton still in seventh, despite an off through the gravel earlier, but coming straight back on again. So Sergio Perez, who started down in 11th place, has gone a different strategy. He's now on medium compound tyres and is doing some good laps. He's in 8th place. He is a long way from Hamilton. But if any of the top seven have to make an extra pit stop, which they shouldn't have to, but who knows if the wear gets greater on the tyres than they're expecting, then Perez may gain a few more. Tsunoda is currently in ninth place, and the final point currently is likely to go the way of Lance Stroll, which, funnily enough, was the last time he was here at Imola. He also finished in tenth place. His teammate, Fernando Alonso, I'm afraid, is all the way down in 19th, but all 20 cars are still running at this stage, and we're seeing some more from Lance Stroll right now, actually, so he's got another place. He is up into ninth. So having taken 10th last time they were here, he's got an opportunity to get a few more points, Alice. Yeah, and actually Lando Norris has just set personal best of the race. And that last lap was eight tenths quicker than Max Verstappen. Gap about five or six laps ago was at seven seconds. It's now 4.9 seconds between Verstappen and Norris. Uh, now I don't want to get too excited. I can imagine that Max Verstappen has it all under control. He has had to navigate his way through a little bit of traffic, which... Uh, Orlando Norris will be coming up too soon and that is Daniel Ricciardo uh, who is sitting in 12th place and Nico Hülkenberg in 13th place so uh, Lando is finding some pace from somewhere and his last lap as well was four tenths quicker than Charles Leclerc hmm, interesting that because uh, as you said there at one stage it sounded like he was struggling a little bit for grip but right now Lando Norris is doing some very very good laps we're just having a little listen on board with Max Verstappen listen radio uh, the main loss is to Lando, turn two, turn six. Yeah, my tyres are more made. Uh, just information, Max, that's all. Yeah, same for me. <laughs> Max knows that his tyres are not at their best, but he also knows how to look after tyres in a race, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, I always like hearing uh, between GP, his race engineer, the uh, love-hate relationship, I guess. Uh, a relationship is so important between you and your engineer, and I'm sure they definitely have a good relationship, a very successful relationship at that. It's definitely all love. It's just a different way of demonstrating the love, I think, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> it's their ninth year together now, actually. Yeah. They've really been... I mean, we were just talking about the fact that Charles Leclerc has got a, a, a new race engineer for this very event. Uh, Valtteri Bottas has got uh, a race engineer that's only on the second race with him. But, yeah, nine years together for uh, GP Lampiesi with, uh, with, with Max. Yeah, the Staffan has a very direct way of communicating. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't mince his words at all. Uh, he doesn't spare anyone's brushes, his knowledge of radio. Verstappen is complaining about. I see, I see, I see. Oh, oh good. I'm for shipping. <laughs> he can see Verstappen's tyres going off. He can, is what is, is what Norris he is saying. He must have binocular eyes. Yeah, exactly. 4.2 seconds um, behind. But GP Lambiesi is uh, a very sort of forthright character himself. He's a very strong character, and uh, he's, you know some engineers are much more diffident. He's not like that. Um, um, he's a really nice guy, but you know you wouldn't want to mess with him either. And so um, much like Andrew Benson. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, so they, I think they're a quite a good match, and the fact that they've been together for nine years. And Lambiese, Max considers him one of his sort of core team of people within Red Bull that he really wouldn't want to leave. Obviously, people are leaving Red Bull at the moment uh, because of the a lot of it because of the Christian Horner situation. Um, uh, Lambiese is one of the guys that Verstappen would feel feels very important to keep hold of. Yeah, no, I understand that. And working with your race engineer is crucial. That's what Charles Leclerc is doing for the first time with his new race engineer here this weekend. And it seems to be working quite well, the way they're speaking to each other, Brian Bozzi. Um, but we are seeing some more um, people being told to come into the pits, interestingly. Yeah, so George Russell has decided he wants to get rid of these hard tyres. He's going to put a set of used medium tyres onto his Mercedes. That promotes Lewis Hamilton up into sixth place. And he's, I'm guessing, Ben, who might come out just in front of Perez. Yeah, it's going to be close, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I'm just looking at who's got really smelly old tyres at the moment. And I, Russell was one of them. I mean, there are some at the back that are really struggling now. Bottas on 43 lap old tyres. And he's right in the middle of this chasing pack and he, he's going to struggle to keep hold of them the car at this rate there are a lot of them on those old tires Perez has just set fast this lap but as you can see um, in fact Russell managed to get out in front so they had the right gap that was clever they, they decided right we've got the correct gap over Perez at the moment let's get him in put fresh tires on Best the main thing to focus on now Max is as the gap is less than five seconds we uh, really can't afford any track limits so focus on that mate yeah, because if he does get track limits, he's getting slam dunk with a five second penalty and uh, his engineer, GP, right in there saying that he's now within uh, five seconds is Lando Norris, who's just set uh, a personal best in the first and last sector, last lap around half a second quicker than Max Verstappen. 3.8 is the gap as we are on lap 54 out of 63. Yeah, so it's, Norris is still working hard. He hasn't given up on this at all. And Norris, who won last time out in Miami, beating Max Verstappen, partially helped by safety car. But when we got the restarts going, there was no doubt that he had better pace than Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen was not able to keep up with him. So this McLaren is working extremely well. Oscar Piastri has the full updated version this weekend as well. He's currently down, right down in fourth place, but he's between the two Ferraris and having been put on the grid behind them at the oh and we've just been told about the first car not going to make the end and that is alexander album and unfortunately he's been told to retire the car so that'll be the first non-finisher of this race jenny yeah he's been beset by problems really he didn't qualify particularly well he was in about uh, 14th position i think um but they had this um pit stop that didn't go quite right the tire wasn't attached on properly so he had to come back in he was a lap down they didn't have any new hard tires so he had some involved out on used mediums and uh, yeah retiring the car means that they can switch a few, few things around for the next races which is monaco Okay, well, let's see, but uh, uh, Lando Norris is still putting some good laps together here. Last time around, one second faster than Max Verstappen, and he is now 2.6 seconds behind Max Verstappen. We have a graphic that's been shown to us, five laps, with five laps of striking distance. So before the end of this race, if Lando Norris keeps up this pace, he will be on the back of Max Verstappen and the gap the live gap now 2.3 seconds so it's coming down so quickly Ben new fastest lap no surprise though for George Russell because he's on a fresh set of tyres uh, as more fuel has been burned away so the car is now lighter uh, on fresh tyres and he's just set the fastest lap so far a 118.5 so Russell is currently in seventh place he's behind his teammate I wondered whether they were going to bring Hamilton in as well they haven't done he's still out there he's currently in sixth place but Russell behind going a fair bit faster I'm just having a look to see. No, I just, I, it was so close between the d DRS detection zone there whether uh, Daniel Ricciardo was going to help Lando Norris across, uh, across that line. But uh, it wasn't to be, as we're getting an onboard replay of Max Verstappen, who he really is struggling with his tyres. Good evening, let me buy even more stupid. <laughs> 
I think that was uh, Tsunoda giving him space, but I don't quite know why he was that upset because he got out of the way. But clearly, uh, Verstappen felt that he lost a bit of time behind him. Yeah, I mean, he did let him by, make Max go down the inside of one of the fastest corners on the track, which is turn nine. So Max lost a lot of time there. Gap now, 2.1 seconds. I mean, I think we've got a fight on our hands for the win here, Ben. Yeah, this is good stuff from Lando Norris once again. The man now with extra confidence in a Formula One car, having taken his first Grand Prix victory a couple of weeks ago in Miami, knowing that he can do it, he can get in front. Can he do it here, though? That's the big question. But as you say, the gap is coming down, and Max Verstappen is having to work hard, using plenty of curb, just trying to look after those tyres wherever possible. This is going to be a wonderful battle towards the end. The gap, as they come over the line this time, just over two seconds. He is definitely getting that bit closer, and his lap was around three tenths quicker on that last lap. Verstappen has two laps newer tyres compared to Lando Norris. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, and it looks like, to me, like Lando Norris has got the bit between the teeth. He can smell blood here. He can smell another victory. Can he close that gap enough to get an overtake challenge? OK, we shall see how that goes. And there's a bit of excitement amongst the McLaren fans, uh, no doubt about it, because they can see there is a chance, perhaps, to really put Max Verstappen under pressure. We are on lap 57 out of 63, into the closing stages. I don't think there's going to be much of a battle for third place because Charles Leclerc is looking comfortable there. And this will be the first Ferrari podium at Imola, if it happens, for the first time since 2006. So there will be something for the fans to cheer about uh, to have one of their drivers up on the podium mind you science down in fifth and Lando happy to push turn nine a little bit more I'm fishing as much as I can eh? I mean, I feel there with Lando, when, when you are pushing, he clearly is, he's not going to be poodling around, is he, that uh, your engineer sort of thinks they're being uh, helpful, which of course they are, but you, you really need to concentrate, especially at a circuit like this, where the gravel is right on the edge, a small mistake, uh, and that will be Lando's chances of winning this race gone but now he is 1.6 seconds behind Max Verstappen is much stronger than uh, Max in the first sector two tenths the last lap the pretty even Stevens in the middle and then he's a, a couple of tenths quicker in the final sector but he is ragging that McLaren using every inch of circuit possible his eyes will be fixated on making sure he's using every inch of the track on the exits and also of course on the back of Max Verstappen yeah fascinating to see this the gap is just very very narrowly coming down but is it going to be enough but this is wonderful to watch Lando Norris he is such a such a star driver lovely to hear Will Joseph on the radio to him his race engineer um, he's been together with him for now six years so it's the sixth year they've worked together they have a, they have a good relationship you sometimes get a, a, some interesting response but it works well for them just looking at um, Lando Norris now, I mean, he's, he's suddenly found this pace. Is it because he's been allowed to just go to the end now? He doesn't need to save any cut tyres. Or what's going on? How has he managed to find this pace and close that gap between him and Verstappen? I think the answer to that is that the Verstappen's uh, degradation has, uh, is higher than, uh, than Lando's. I mean, uh, of course, they would have all been looking after their tyres at some point throughout this race but I can tell you now they are all well certainly these two drivers at least all pushing uh, as hard as they can and we're looking back or we were looking back from the rear of Max Verstappen we can see his car moving about snaking about and Lando Norris clobbered the curb there the last curb at the Villeneuve chicane was all over the exit curb the, the gap at the moment has kind of stabilized though it's uh, 1.7 seconds pointing 1.5 seconds so as he's got closer to the rear of this Red Bull, the dirty air is having a big effect because previous time round, uh, the first sector, for example, he's lost a couple of tenths as what compared to what Lando Norris was doing earlier on. So uh, it could be that uh, he'll get close, but he'll have the effect of the dirty air and he won't be able to draw 
that much closer up to the back of Max Verstappen with uh, just under four laps remaining. That's right. And interestingly, um, Charles Leclerc, who's in third and not in the battle with these two, but he did almost exactly the same lap time that the both of them did ahead of him. So they were all did 120.5 last time around, although Max has actually just done a very good lap. He's done a 120.3 for, uh, for once. He's a fraction quicker than Lando Norris on this lap. So the gap has just opened up a tenth again. 1.8 seconds now. It is looking very, very difficult, this, for Lando Norris to be able to get right on board with him. Piastri still in fourth place. Carlos Sainz fifth. Hamilton is still in sixth place. George Russell setting the fastest laps. He is in seventh place, having made that later change onto a medium tyres. Perez is still some six seconds behind him in eighth. Lance Stroll is currently in ninth in the top ten. Completed by Yuki Tsunoda, the Japanese driver who lives just down the road from this track at Imola. It would be uh, delightful for him to score a point for 10th place here. Now, I don't know if Max Verstappen might have made a small mistake in that first sector, but he's done uh, not a great first sector compared to what he did uh, the previous lap. 1.5 is the gap now as they're heading out of the middle sector. We wait and see what the lap times will be in that sector as they cross the line. And yeah, Lando a little bit slower. Wickets in the cricket. Let's hear from Ali Mitchell. Yes, both Pakistan openers have gone. They put on a 50-run stand, but in quick succession, a wicket for Eccleston and one for Charlie Dean, although Sidra Amin should have reviewed her LBW. It came off her glove. Pakistan suddenly are now 69 for two. They need 177 if they're to be England here. And we are 11 overs into the run chase. Three laps to go in the race here at Imola. And right now the gap down to 1.3 seconds as Max Verstappen holds the lead over Lando Norris in second place. Charles Leclerc still in a further back gap further back in 5.8 seconds he's in third but it's all about these top two so far of course Max Verstappen is doing everything he needs to do controlling the pace but Lando Norris has not given up no we're catching a replay now of Esteban Ocon who was all over the back of Valtteri Bottas is he going to brave it round the outside of the fast Piratella yes he is a so nice move by Esteban Ocon that moves him up into 14th place but still not a great uh, race from uh, the Alpines they're down in 14th and 17th place both have lost uh, track position now Lando Norris 1.3 seconds a good uh, first sector heading up now to the Branti Alta chicane Cl more cl hasn't been this close for a while has he been no it is very close indeed and it's an exciting conclusion to this race or oh, let's listen to Max if you want to top up the battery, it'll be mode 7, Max. But you will clip more in mode 7. So, he's just been told what to do. I wonder if that's going to work. He's obviously working hard. And uh, right now, the battery level for Verstappen definitely a little bit lower than Lando Norris, who had some 60% of the battery level, and Verstappen had 30%. That's the hybrid energy system, and yet you just said the figures there, so a big difference. One second now, the gap between Verstappen and Lando Norris. Uh, so this could come down to the, the final lap of the race, but luckily for Verstappen, it's hard to overtake here. So there's only going to be one real opportunity for Lando Norris going on to the final lap, and that'll be down into turn one. If he can manage to close that gap to within one second, he will get the DRS with just that drag reduction system. The rear wing will swing open and, and give him a little boost of energy that um, means it's more air efficient. It's a good point because he's so close to getting within one second. It's not quite there yet. 1.3 seconds uh, was the last time when it came across a checking point. 1.2 seconds now. He's so close to being within the DRS zone is Lando Norris. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do it now because they're just going through the detection zone now and the gap was 1.2 seconds. So unfortunately for Lando, he's not going to be able to make benefit of the DRS heading down the straight. He will have a little bit of toe from the rear of the Red Bull but it's going to be down to Max Verstappen now he very rarely makes mistakes all he's got to do is just make sure he gets his apexes hits his breaking points uh, but I think unfortunately for Lando Norris he's not going to have any more opportunities to to get past here he's in the dirty air 
of Max Verstappen gap, eight tenths of a second. So it is close and it's getting closer, but it's going to be so hard in these remaining corners to find a way past. Yeah, but I tell you what, this is certainly giving the fans something pretty exciting uh, as they watch just to see how close Lando Norris is to the back of Max Verstappen on this final lap. He's got the gap down to 0.7 of a second. But as you say, it's going to be very difficult to actually take advantage of that. And Max has so much experience now. He's very unlikely to make an error. Perhaps in the younger days when he first came along, he made very few errors then. Uh, but now he knows exactly what to do with the car. Through that Variante Alta, the chicane where we have seen lots of errors this weekend. No mistakes from either. Still Verstappen holding the edge over Lando Norris. Eight tenths of a second now. DRS should be available. So quite a late break from Lando Norris. Both of them going right out to the edge of the curb. But it's not going to be enough for Lando, I don't think. As he comes down across the start finish line, Max Verstappen wins the Grand Prix here at Imola. His fifth win of 2024 and his third consecutive win at this track, matching what Michael Schumacher did back in the early 2000s. Third, second place goes to Lando Norris. Third does go to Ferrari. Charles Leclerc getting that first podium for Ferrari since 2006. It was Michael Schumacher who had the last Ferrari podium here, but it is Max Max Verstappen once again, who has taken the dominant form and taken the maximum points here today. Mind you, he didn't get fastest lap. <laughs> he usually gets everything. Further down the order, fourth place for Oscar Piastri, fifth for Carlos Sainz, Lewis Hamilton in sixth place, George Russell finished seventh, Sergio Perez eighth, Lance Stroll was ninth, and the final point went to Yuki Tsunoda in tenth place. This has been a magical day for Max Verstappen once again, his 59th career win. He has led every race so far this year, and he's had one non-finish, one second, but otherwise he's won them all, and it has been remarkably impressive despite the pressure that he had from Lando Norris. Well, if you want to stay with us on the BBC Sports website, then do. But for now, on Radio 5 Live, we're going to be going over to the Premier League. Let's join Mark Chapman. Yeah, final round of Premier League fishers gets underway at 4 o'clock.